ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد so today inshallah we will explain page 211 surah yunus uh, chapter 10 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa idha adhaqana an-nas rahmatan min ba'di dharra masathum idha lahum makrun fi ayatina qulillahu asra'u makra in rusulana yaktubuna ma tamkurun huwa alladhi yusayyirukum fil barri wal bahr حتى إذا كنتم في الفلك وجرين بهم بريح طيبة وفرحوا بها وفرحوا بها جاءت هاريح عاصف وجاءهم الموج من كل مكان وظنوا أنهم أحيط بهم دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين لَئِنْ أَجَيْتَنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ فَلَمَّا أَجَاهُمْ إِذَا هُمْ يَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّمَا بَغْيُكُمْ عَلَى أَنفُسِكُمْ مَتَاعَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا ثم إلينا مرجعكم فننبئكم بما كنتم تعملون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and when we let mankind taste mercy after some adversity has afflicted them then behold they take to plotting against our ayat say Allah is more swift in planning certainly our messengers the angels record all of that which you plot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, it is who enables you to travel through land and sea. Until when you are in the ships and they sail with them with a favorable, favorable wind. And they are glad they're in because of this favorable wind that causes them to sail smoothly. Then comes to them a stormy wind and the waves come to them from all sides and they think that they are encircled therein, they're going to perish. Then they make dua to Allah, making their faith pure for Allah alone. They don't worship anyone, they don't make dua to anyone at that time except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Promising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you Allah, deliver us from this, we shall truly be of the grateful. Actually, if I remember correctly, this happened to the current, uh, the previous singer, Sami, uh, Sami Yusuf. I think he was drowning and he made dua to Allah that if he's to save him, he's to worship him alone. And after that, he became Muslim. But after a while, subhanAllah, he started singing again. We ask Allah to bring him back to the correct path. But when Allah delivers them, Behold, they rebel, disobey Allah in the earth wrongfully. O mankind, your rebellion is only against yourselves. A brief enjoyment of this worldly life, then in the end, unto us is your return. And we shall inform you of that which you used to do. Man changes when he receives mercy after times of distress. So Allah tells us here that when Allah makes men feel his mercy and takes away all the afflictions, and take away all the distress from them, men take to plotting, takes to plotting against our ayat. The coming of mercy after distress is like the coming of ease after hardship, fertility after aridity, rain after drought. So this is Allah's sunnah in this world in existence. Mujahid said that man's attitude indicates a mockery and belying of the blessings. Meaning that when a person is in distress, he makes dua to Allah to lift that distress from him. 
promising, remembering his sins and promising Allah that he will repent from those sins and promising Allah that he will worship him alone. But then when Allah takes away that distress from, from him, he just forgets all the promises he made. And he says, as Allah says, قَدْ This happens to men and happens to societies. Allah gives people and societies afflictions so that they may repent. And then they make dua to Allah and try to correct what's wrong. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts the calamity from them, they say that the coming of the calamity and its departure is just a normal thing that happens and it happens to our forefathers. So they forget the fact that they were weak and they were fearful and they made dua to Allah and promised him all of that. And that's why Allah promises them that if they do that, Allah will bring them back to whatever situation that they were fearful in. And Allah this time will not answer their dua. And this is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we just saw this last week in the ayah, when Allah says, and when harm touches man, he invokes us, he makes dua for us. Allah uh, says that when affliction touches men, he invokes us, he makes dua to us, lying on his side or sitting or while standing. So makes, basically he makes dua in all of his states. But when Allah takes away the affliction, instead of them thanking Allah, repenting to him and remain on the correct path, they go back to wherever disobediences they were on before the calamity. Al-Bukhari recorded that Allah وسلم, led the subh, the dawn prayer, after it had rained the night before. So he وسلم, said, Do you know? So he, he's addressing the companions, عنهم, asking them, Do you know what your Lord has said last night? They replied, Allah and his message know better. So he وسلم, said, قال أصبح من عبادي مؤمن بي وكافر فأما من قال مترنا بفضل الله ورحمته فذاك فذاك مؤمن بي كافر بالكوكب وأما من قال مترنا بنوء كذا وكذا فذاك كافر بي مؤمن بالكوكب. So Allah said, Allah said, this morning some of my servants because the night before had rained. So the following morning Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, this morning some of my servants have become believers and some disbelievers in me. So the servants that said we have had this rainfall due to the grace and mercy of Allah is a believer in Allah and a disbeliever in the stars. And a slave who said we have had this rainfall due to the rising of such and such star is a disbeliever in me and a believer in the stars. Because some people say that, that because of the movement of the stars, things happen in the universe. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes everything happen in the universe, including the creation of the stars or their movements. So we attribute all actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the creation. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qulillahu asra'u makra. Say Allah is more swift in planning than you. This means that Allah is more capable of gradually seizing them with punishment. So these people that were in severe situation, they were in distress, they made dua to Allah and after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted the calamity from them, they went back to their dis, uh, disbelief or their evil deeds. Allah is telling them that he is more capable of gradually seizing them with punishment while granting them concession of a delay. Allah is granting them a respite until the criminals think that they would not be punished. Then Allah's punishment comes just when they think that they are safe. So here Ibn Kathir says, but in reality, there are periods of respite. Allah has given them enough time to either repent or increase in their evil deeds based on their choice. Then they will be taken suddenly. The noble writers, the angels here, uh, will write everything that these people do. And the angels will keep count of the, of the deeds of these people. Then the angels will present these deeds before the all-knowing of the seen and unseen worlds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the angels, they, they write the, our deeds and they are uh, shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord will then reward them for the significant deeds and even the seemingly insignificant that may be as tiny as a spot, spot on a date pit. This is called the qitmir in Arabic because every date pit subhanAllah has a spot, it's just like a stamp. Allah further states, it is he who enables you to travel to the land and through the sea. 
which means it's Allah who preserves you and maintains you with his care and his watching. So it is Allah that preserves you and maintains you with his care and watching and enables you to travel through the land and the sea until when you are in the ship and the ship sails with a favorable wind that allows the ship to move smoothly and they are happy with that situation, with the smoothness and calmness of the trip. Then comes to these ships a stormy wind and the waves come to them from all sides. And the people in these ships think that they are encircled by these waves and that they're going to be drowned and destroyed. At that point, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making their faith pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't make dua to Jesus alayhi salam. They don't make dua to uh, all the other uh, false gods that they worship. They make dua sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we give the example of uh, the uh, the brother that became a Muslim when he was drowning and many people actually uh, uh, experienced the situation. So in this situation of hardship, they would not invoke an idol or a statue besides Allah because they know the statue can't really come to them and help them because they know in their own hearts that these statues don't benefit nor do they harm. They are just a means for people to gather around each other and to have a common, uh, common thing that they worship in, uh, and ple in pleasing shaitan and their evil uh, uh, inclinations. As Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his people, So you have taken these statues these statues وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْثَانًا مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُ بَعْضٌ ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُ بَعْضُكُمْ بِبَعْضٍ وَيَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارُ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ So these people that worship these statues, these false gods, as Ibrahim alayhi salam told his people, they're only doing this uh, so that they can have a common ground for these people between them, so that they can uh, love each other and feel that they belong to the same false religion in this worldly life. However, in the day of judgment, these people that were cronies because of their false worship, on a day of judgment, they will become enemies of one another and they will curse each other and hellfire will be their abode and no one will be able to help them. So this is why they worship these statues. But of course, when, when harm comes their way, they forget all these statues because they know in, they, in their hearts that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives and takes away. It is only Allah that harms and benefits. So when harm touches you upon the sea, those that you call besides Allah, the false gods, they vanish from you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah brings you safe to land, you turn away from him and man is ever and grateful. لَإِنْ أَنْجَيْتَنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ If you truly save us from this hardship, O oh Allah, we will be sincerely thankful to you. But of course, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them, they revert back to their disbelief and polytheism. And this is also similar to Allah's statement in Surah Al-Isra. وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَا تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ فَلَمَّا نَجَّكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ أَعْرَضْتُمْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ كَفُورًا And when harm touches you upon the sea, those that you call upon, the false gods that you call upon, vanish from you except Allah alone. But when he brings you to safe land, you turn away from Allah and man is ever ungrateful. 
And in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah mukhlisin alahu dina la'in ajaytana min adhihi lanakunanna min ash-shakirin. They make dua to Allah, making their faith pure, sincere for him. They don't worship anything besides Allah. Promising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you deliver us, if you save us from this calamity, from this situation, we shall truly be of the grateful. This means that we will not ascribe others as partners with you. We will later worship you alone as we are praying to you here and now. Allah states, but when Allah delivers them from that distress, behold, they rebel, disobey Allah in the earth wrongfully. Meaning they returned to their disbelief and evil deeds as if they had never experienced any difficulties and had never promised Allah anything. So they break their promise, they revert back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, so man, after being saved from the calamity, he passes on as if he had never invoked us for a harm that touched him before. Allah then said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّمْ هَبَوْ يُكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ مَتَاعَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Oh mankind, you're rebellion, you're disobedience to Allah. The fact that you promised Allah that you wish from alone and then you revert back to your disbelief and polytheism is only against yourselves. It is only against yourselves. It is yourselves that will taste the evil consequences of this transgression. It's not Allah. Allah is free of all needs. You will not harm anyone else with your transgression except yourselves because as the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no sin that is more worthy than Allah hasten the punishment for in this world on top of the punishment that Allah has in store for its doer in the hereafter than oppression and cutting the ties of the womb. So oppression, oppressing people, doing injustice to them, and cutting the ties of the womb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes the person for it in this dunya before the hereafter. As the Prophet said, Allah's statement, a brief enjoyment of this worldly life, means that you only have a short enjoyment in this slow and a base worldly life. So the fact that you broke your promise for the sake of enjoying whatever is left of your life, uh, basically thinking that if you obey Allah, you're not going to have enjoyment, then that is uh, an evil decision that you made. You're going to pay the price for it. It doesn't matter how long you live. You won't pass uh, even a thousand years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one of them wishes that he shall live until a thousand years. But even if you were to live a thousand years, and of course you won't, then at the end, into Allah is your return. Meaning your goal and final destination is the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَنُنَبِّئُكُمْ And we shall inform you of all your deeds, good or bad. Then we shall recompense you for them. So let him who finds good in his record, in his book of records with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then let him praise Allah because Allah enabled him and gave him tawfiq and opened the necessary steps for him to commit this good deed. But if he finds evil deeds, then let him blame no one but himself. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of this worldly life when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يتفكرون Verily, the parable of this life, the example of this life of the world is as is like a water, which we send down from the sky. So by this water arises the intermingled produce of the earth, of which men and cattle eat. Until when the earth is glad in its adornments and is beautiful 
and its people think that they have all the powers of disposal over it, our command reaches it by night or by day, and we make it like a clean mown harvest as if it had never flourished yesterday. Thus do we explain the ayat in detail for the people who reflect. And Allah calls to the abode of peace, which is paradise, and guides whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills to the straight path. And of course, those that want to be guided, Allah with his mercy will guide them. Those that seek guidance, Allah will guide them. The example of this life, Allah the Almighty has set the example of the similitude of this life, the life of this world, its glitter and the swiftness of its passage, likening it to the plant and vegetation that Allah brings out from the earth. So water, rain comes down, mixes with the earth, the seed is in there, grows, gives vegetation, greenery, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful scenery, and also uh, beneficial for men and animals they eat from. But then at the end, this plant dies out as if it has never existed. That's the same way human beings are. We never existed. All of a sudden we are born to our parents. They're happy with us. They pick us up. They laugh with us. They, 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 they take us, you know, they, they basically uh, hand us over from hand to hand. Everyone is happy because of your birth. And then you grow, you start to walk. People, your parents are happy with you. You start to speak. Oh, he's able to speak. And then we, we earn some education. And then after that, we grow older. All of a sudden, we are shoulder to shoulder with our parents. And then your parents die out and you become the parent. Then after that, your time comes and then you are lifted on the hands, the same way you were lifted when you were born. With people happy with your birth, people will lift you in your coffin with the hands, crying for your death. And this is all it is. This is your life. It's basically a cycle. This is the life on this earth. Your body is born and your body dies, but your soul, once Allah created it, will never die. And it will be in hellfire, than billah. We seek refuge with Allah from that. For the disbelievers, it will be in paradise. We ask Allah to make us among them. This is what this life is about. So a person should not be fooled by it. So Allah the Almighty has set an example of the similitude of the life of this world. It's a glitter and the swiftness of its passage, likening it to the plant and vegetation that Allah brings out from the earth. This plant grows from the water that comes down from the sky. These plants are food for people, such as the fruits and other different types of and kinds of food. Some other kinds are food for cattle, such as clover plants green fodder for the cattle and herbage, etc. Hatta idha akhadat il ard zukhrufaha wa zayyanat wa dhanna ahluha annahum qadirun alayha ataha amruna laylan aw naharan fajalnaha hasidan ka an lam taghna bil ams Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says until when the earth is glad in its adornments after the water comes down, after it rains, then the earth is glad in its adornments and its greenery, different uh, flowers with different colors, and is beautiful, meaning it becomes good by what grows on its hills, such as blooming flowers of different shapes and colors, just like human beings in their youth. They are strong, they are full of energy. And as people think, those who planted this land and put in it the seeds, these people think that they have all the powers of disposal over it. They can do whatever they want with these plants. They can burn it. They can sell it. They can let the animals eat from it. So they think that they have power over it. But while they were in that frame of mind, that they were able to do all things with that crop, a thunderbolt, or a severe cold storm comes to it. It dried its leaves and spoiled its fruits. So all of a sudden they cannot manage the affairs freely as they thought they were able to. 
Allah said, Ataha amruna laylan aw nahara fajannaha hasida. Our command reaches it by night or by day, and we make it like a clean moon harvest. Everything is destroyed. All those hopes of the money they were gonna make, or the food they were gonna store, or the cattle that was gonna be full from eating that, all those hopes vanish. So it became dry after it was green and flourishing as if it had never flourished yesterday, as if nothing existed there before. Qatada said, as if it had not flourished, as if it was never blessed. Such are things after they perish, after they're gone. They are as if they had never existed. Just look at our parents and our grandparents, the ones that are deceased among them. Oh, it's as if they were never here. It's as if they were never here. Similarly, the hadith says, يُؤْتَى بِأَنْعَمِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا فَيُغْمَسُ فِي النَّارِ الْغَمْسَةِ فَيُقَالُ لَهُ هَلَ رَأَيْتَ خَيْرًا قَطْ هَلْ مَرَّ بِكَ نَعِيمٌ قَطْ فَيَقُولُ لَا وَيُؤْتَى بِأَشَدِّ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا فِي الدُّنْيَا فَيُغْمَسُ فِي النَّعِيمِ غَمْسَةِ ثُمَّ يُقَالُ لَهُ هَلْ رَأَيْتَ بُؤْسًا قَطْ فَيَقُولُ لَا The Prophet ﷺ said, comparing the, 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 the misery in this world and the happiness in this world to what's in store in the hereafter for the believers and the disbelievers, a person who led the most prosperous life in this world, but he was a disbeliever, will be brought up and dipped once in the fire. He will then be asked, have you ever found any good or comfort? Because he was living a very comfortable life in this world. But once he is dipped once in the fire, he will be asked this question and he will reply no. And a person who had experienced extreme adversity in this world while he was a believer will be brought up and dipped once in the bliss of paradise. Then he will be asked, did you ever face any hardship or misery in, in your existence? Of course, he's going to forget all the misery that he experienced in this worldly life, and he will reply no, because he experienced the bliss of paradise. Allah said about those who were destroyed, فَأَسْبَحُوا فِي دِيَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَغْنَوْ فِيهَا Allah said about some of the people that he destroyed, uh, it is the people of Thamud here, if my memory serves me correctly. So they lay dead, prostrate in their homes as if they had never lived there. After they were so powerful, threatening their prophets and uh, mocking the verses and miracles that came to them, all of a sudden they were dead on their knees as if they never existed. Thus do we explain the ayat, we do explain the proofs, the evidence is in detail, but who's going to understand these, detail, these details? It is the people who reflect, not, not everyone. The people who reflect on the truth, they will understand these ayat. So they may, they may take a lesson from this example of this worldly life, how beautiful it is, and then all of a sudden it vanishes. In the swift vanishing of this world from its people, while they are deceived by it. They would trust this world and trust its promises and then it unexpectedly turns away from them. Because see, this is a very important aspect. This is a sunnah of Allah in this world. We have to understand this, that this world, this dunya that we're living in, in its, na na in its nature that Allah made it in, runs away from those who seek it, but seeks those who run away from it. So if a person disobeys Allah to get worldly benefits, even if he gets those worldly benefits, they're going to be a cause for his misery. But if a person prefers Allah's obedience over the worldly life, over the worldly benefits, Allah will bring those worldly benefits his way. In a halal when he will enjoy it. So this world runs away from those who seek it in a haram way or even in a halal way, if it's too much. If you do israf, that means you do too much of this worldly life. It will run away from you and will you will keep following it. And that's going to be at the, at the expense of your religion. While those who run away from this world, they only want from this world what is enough for them to have a comfortable life and a peaceful life and an honorable life so that they don't ask people, so that they're not poor, so that their families are not and not uh, suffering because of hunger or poverty. 
if the only one what is enough for them as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make dua Allahumma j'al rizqi kifafa wa Allah give me from rizq whatever is enough for me then for those people the dunya comes to them but guess what when the dunya comes to them they they spread it for the sake of Allah they give charity they go to hajj they do something so they don't get the dunya and then they hide it in bank accounts or something because in their hearts they don't love this dunya they only want from this dunya what is enough for them and if they get more from it they employ it for the benefit of, of the religion, for their own benefit, obviously, because when you spend this extra money for the benefit of your religion, it is for yourself. You are storing it for yourself in the hereafter when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you will be uh, in need the most of any uh, good deed that you have done in this world, uh, even if it is as small as a speck uh, of dust. Allah mentioned the parable of this world and the plants of the earth in several ayat in his noble book. We also have the example Allah gave in Surah Noon about the pious person who died and left his children after him. And the children said that we're going to go by night without making any noise so that the poor people don't hear us uh, leaving so that we can uh, gather the crop and we're not going to give the zakat that is mandatory on us to the poor people. So of course they had this intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them because of their intention. And when they went to their land, they found that it was all burnt out because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them. They did not want to give the small percentage of 10% uh, or, uh, of, of the crop if it was uh, it's mostly irrigated by rainwater or 5% if it is mostly irrigated by uh, their own effort, like the well or things like that. So instead of them giving away 5 or 10%, they gave 100% without getting any reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them so that they can repent and not do that the following year and give uh, the poor people their the right because that zakat is the right of the poor person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said about this dunya in Surah Al-Kahf, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح عشيما تغروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا and put forward to them give them the example of the life of this world it is just like the water the rain which we send down from the sky and the vegetation of the earth mingles with it and becomes fresh and green but later it becomes dry and broken pieces which the wind scatters. And Allah is able to do everything. Allah SWT also gave similar examples in Surah Al-Zumar and Surah Al-Hadid. Invitation to the everlasting gifts that do not vanish. Allah said, Wallahu yad'u ila dari salami wa yahdi man ila siratim mustaqim. When Allah mentioned the swiftness of this world and its termination, He invited people to paradise and encouraged them to seek it through the deeds, not speech only, but through the deeds. He called it the abode of peace. The abode of peace is paradise. It is the abode of peace because it is free from defects and miseries. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu yad'u ila dari salam wa yahdi man yasha'u ila salatim mustaqim. Allah calls to the home of peace and guides whom he wills to the straight path. It was never that Jabir bin Abdullah said, Allah وسلم, came out one day and said to us, Inni ra'aytu fil manami ka'anna Jibreela inda ra'si wa Mikaela inda rijli yaqulu ahaduhuma li sahibih idrib lahu mathala faqal isma' sami'at udhunuk wa'aqil aqala qalbuk innama mathaluk ومثل أمتك كمثل ملك كمثل ملك اتخذ دارا ثم بنى فيها بيتا ثم جعل فيها مأدبة ثم بعث رسولا يدعو الناس إلى طعامه فمنهم من أجاب الرسول ومنهم من تركه فالله الملك والدار الإسلام والبيت الجنة وأنت يا محمد رسول فمن أجابك دخل الإسلام ومن دخل الإسلام دخل الجنة ومن دخل الجنة أكل منها The Prophet said I have seen my sleep that it was as if Jibreel 
and of course the dream of prophets is revelation as Muhammad and Ibrahim and Yusuf all these prophets saw visions in their sleep and that was a revelation from Allah so vision uh, visions of prophets their dreams are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have seen in my sleep that it was as if Jibreel was at my head and Mikael at my leg they were saying to each other give an example for him he said listen your ear may listen and fathom may, may your heart fathom the example of you and your ummah o Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that of a king who has built a house on his land he arranged a banquet in it then he sent a messenger to invite people to his food some people accepted the invitation and came to eat from that banquet and others did not this example signifies that allah is the king the land is islam the house is paradise and you muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are the messenger that went to call people to this to this banquet whomever responds to your call enters islam and whomever enters islam enters paradise paradise will eat from it. Ibn Jayyab recorded this hadith. It was also reported that Abu Darda said that Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Two angels descend every day in which the sun rises and say that which all Allah's creatures could hear. All of Allah's creatures can hear these two angels making this statement except the jinn and humans. These two angels say, oh people, come to your Lord. Anything little and sufficient is better than a lot, but distractive, that it distracts you from what is more important from your religion, from the hereafter. And he, and he subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this down in the Quran when he said, Wallahu yad'u ila dar salam So the Prophet sallam explained this ayah through this hadith. Allah calls to the abode of peace. Ibn Abi Hatim and Ibn Jari recorded this. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all trials and tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure the sick among us and to have mercy on our dead among us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back the Muslims to the true religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us brothers once again and to gather us on the monotheism that Allah wants from us to guide the rulers of the Muslims to that which is in the benefit of the religion and the their worldly life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the truth and show us the true path and keep us therein until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the best day of our existence the day that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi jannat firdaus al-uliya wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen